Back, we're continuing coverage tonight of former President Trump's historic second indictment. Trump was arrested in Miami earlier this afternoon. He's pleaded not guilty to all 37 federal charges. A reminder to viewers out there, the charges the former president is facing are 31 counts for willful retention of national defense information, three counts for withholding or concealing documents in a federal investigation, two for false statements, and a count of conspiracy to obstruct justice. Former U.S. Attorney for the Western District, Pat Miles, is here with us to discuss the uh, fallout uh, on these charges. Everybody talking about this today. Pat, thank you so much for being here with us. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you've been watching the coverage as well. What are your initial uh, observations on today? History is being made. We've never had a president or former president indicted. Today was arraigned, went before a magistrate judge, mm -hmm. was not held over. It was released on his own recognizance. Mm -hmm. So he, and unlike most defendants, he'll be allowed to travel freely throughout the United States to continue his presidential campaign. Um, most defendants would either be restricted to that district mm -hmm. down in the Southern District of Florida uh, or held on bail or has to post bail and so forth to not go to jail. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's an amazing day. The indictment that came down, I've read obviously many indictments during my tenure as U.S. Attorney. This one has so much information mm -hmm. and evidence already laid out in there. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it's really pretty amazing. I think the prosecutors in this case knew they had to not be vague and ambiguous. They had to be crystal clear why they were charging former President Trump with these particular charges, that they have a tight case. And, and this is such a, a, a unprecedented territory for so many people here. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the dynamics of it are so inter interesting because you have a Trump appointed judge over the case at this point. How does that handle out? And if the prosecution takes an issue with that, what happens? Well, that's a really fascinating aspect of this because again, we're in unprecedented territory where you have a former president in a federal court in, in, you know, in front of a judge who he himself appointed to the court. That judge would obviously have some allegiance or alignment with, with that former president. Maybe a bias that we saw some rulings by this judge in a civil case that related to the serving of the search warrant at Mar-a-Lago and the review of the documents and she was impeding the investigation uh, by the grand jury and by the FBI. Uh, that was overturned by the U.S. Court of Appeals unanimously by Republican presidential appointees unanimously uh, overturned that prior decision said you are way out of bounds judge. So it, I've you know heard it said this cuts both ways. On one hand, this judge has a lot of power, can affect the way jurors are selected for the trial, uh, what, whether they're going to, you know, should be, the prosecution has so many objections that it can raise for potential jurors, automatically, you know, exempting them. She can, if she sees a potential juror bias that she forces the prosecution to use one of its, you know, special privileges to challenge. That is damaging. And also, judges, once the prosecution presents their case, presents their evidence, the judge could entertain a motion or on her own motion, acquit right then. She could acquit after the defense presents its case. She could acquit on her own motion once the jury receives the case. She could acquit even if the jury votes to convict. She could set aside that conviction of the jury. And obviously so, there's an election happening here soon. If mm -hmm. he ends up being elected president, at what point, depending on where the trial is, could he just say, all right, this is over with? He cannot. I mean, he, the president doesn't control the Department of Justice, okay. really. That, that is independent, uh, the prosecution. And this is a special prosecutor who's even a step removed from the attorney general who's appointed by the president. But again, in Florida, this district, they have what they call a rocket docket. They want these cases to go to trial quickly. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, they, they want to really go to court and have it in front of a, a jury within 70 days, okay. uh, at least six months. So by the end of this year, they would want to have a trial. We've heard politically the Trump team probably wants to string this out through the presidential election. Uh, if he were to be convicted, if he were also at the same time then ultimately get elected president, he could try to pardon himself and then we're into another murky constitutional question area. So really amazing that history is being made here, yeah. unprecedented.
It's interesting, and we're going to have to watch and see how it all plays out. Pat Miles, thank you so much.